when Sony demonstrated a video cassette prototype in October 1969. I don't think even they knew just how much of the world they would change. Even though the VCR had been in existence for nearly a full decade prior, it had suffered for two main reasons. Firstly, it could only be used to record and playback video broadcasts on live television. And secondly, it was really expensive to own a video cassette recorder in those days. This all changed in 1969, when the first video cassette was unveiled, and it was mostly due to a phenomenon that's almost as old as human civilization itself. The phenomenon of pornography. In a conservative country like mine, pornography is often frowned upon as a sign of immorality or social depravity. African parents and societies are known for shying away from the open dialogue around sexual activity. And while this seems to be a fundamental pillar of our society, it also creates a curiosity in our youth that ends up being fulfilled by pornography. And this is why, as of 2022, pornography has grown into a trillion dollar industry with merchandise, live events, and even their own award ceremonies, which are attended by world famous celebrities like Lil Wayne. It almost feels as though everywhere human and technological advancement goes, pornography follows. Early pornography was limited to cave art, artistic drawings, decorative pottery, and sculpture. Published pornography was invented in 1952 in Rome when Marcantonio Riamondi published 16 sexually explicit engravings by Giulio Romano, collectively titled I Modi. Shortly thereafter, Pietro Arnetto wrote his early pornographic work Sonetti Lusriosi in 1927 and Ragionamenti in 1534. Arnetto utilized the printing press, which was invented in 1441, to help disseminate his work. For the most part, only the wealthy and educated were able to purchase and enjoy these printed pornographic works. Photography was invented in 1826, but was not commercially viable until the 1860s. That development, unsurprisingly, led to erotic photos. The advent of half-tone printing, popularized in the 1890s, increased the quality of mass-reproduced images and greatly decreased the cost, eventually leading to the creation of pornographic magazines. Pornography was further revolutionized by the development of motion pictures. By the 1920s, stag films were commercially available for private viewing, and by the 1970s, feature-length pornographic films had supplanted the silent, single-reel stag films. Peep show booths had also evolved in the 1970s, generating millions of dollars in a constant stream of small change. That said, pornography was still expensive, relatively hard to find, and embarrassing to access. Woody Allen's 1971 film Bananas contains an extremely funny scene depicting a man purchasing a pornographic magazine at a local newsstand. Hey Ralph, how much is a copy of Orgasm? Yeah, just put him in a bag, will you? Why? Orgasm. This man wants to buy a copy. How much is it? Doing a sociological study on perversion. Numerous publications printed advertisements for pornographic pictures and movies, and people began to have pornography shipped into their homes. An even bigger change occurred when video cassette recorders hit the market. Suddenly, people could purchase or rent pornographic videos and view them in the privacy of their own homes. Almost simultaneously, cable television arrived. Between 1991 and 2004, home internet became a thing, and with that, our ability to affordably and anonymously access pornography changed forever. Photos and videos catering to every imaginable sexual taste and fetish were readily available for anonymous viewing. 
This porn proliferation was so ubiquitous that it crossed over into pop culture. For example, in 2003, the Broadway smash hit Avenue Q won three Tony Awards, including Best Musical. The show's most memorable song was a conversation between Kate, a schoolteacher, and Trekkie, a fuchsia-haired monster, entitled The Internet is for Porn. So even Broadway had realized the internet's killer app wasn't email, it was porn. Somewhere around 2004, the delivery model for online pornography morphed from pay-per-view porn sites to user-generated tube sites where the revenue came not from subscribers, but from advertisers. At the same time, webcam technology improved enough that people could become porn stars themselves. Plus. Faster internet speeds enabled the streaming of video pornography. Until this time, still imagery had ruled the roost. But suddenly, video was king. More importantly, pornography became almost universally accessible. So what are we trying to say here? Let's track back a little bit. Remember when I said that it almost felt as though everywhere human and technological advancement went, it was trailed by advancement in pornography? In reality, the opposite may be true. Looking back at all the progress humanity has made through the last century, it's perfectly natural to feel a little bit moved by the power of human ingenuity and our thrive for constant improvement. It's natural, but also totally wrong. Because if you really look into the history of our technological development, you'll notice that the force that has been driving us forward this entire time hasn't been our need to better ourselves or seek out the truth in all its forms, but rather our desire to see naked people touch one another. Other businesses soon took note of pornography's unstoppable selling power and decided to get in on all the action. First among them was Polaroid with their early digital cameras. The digital camera had a lot of advantages, but the improved picture quality, editorial control, easily adjustable settings, and reduced film costs all paled in comparison to their biggest selling point. Meet the Swinger, the incredible new Polaroid land camera for 1995. It talks to you. Swing it up and take a look. Then turn the knob until it says yes, right in the viewfinder. Okay, you've got the right setting. Ten seconds later, you zip off a perfect black and white picture. The swinger freezes action. It's always in focus. And it gives you beautiful close-ups. Incredible, especially at 1995. Hey, meet the swinger, Polaroid swinger. This is an actual advert. And the message is very clear. With our cameras, you can now safely take lots and lots and lots of naked pictures. Now, you won't really hear anyone arguing that Imodi was anything but an awesome, all timely combination of professional wrestling and hardcore pornography. But you also won't hear anyone arguing about how it played a huge role in the popularization of print and literature, which it totally did. Guttenberg and his Bible might have gotten the ball rolling, but for centuries Aretino was one of the most read authors in Europe and is today considered one of the fathers of erotic literature. It's obvious that the internet wouldn't have been nearly as popular if it wasn't also a place to watch pornography, but it could also be argued that if it wasn't for pornography, the internet we all know today might not have been born at all. Now, we're not saying that porn invented the internet. We're just saying that almost every piece of modern internet technology can be traced back to the adult trade. Or at least that's the opinion of Jonathan Coopersmith, a professor at Texas A&M University who teaches the history of technology. For example, during the bad old years of the internet, porn sites were the only places that asked you to pay for stuff online. Viewing content via fee-based subscriptions, credit card verification, and internet billing systems all originated with and were perfected by pornography. 
As previously stated, all sorts of online businesses have been taking their cues from pornography, especially when it comes to fighting online piracy. You see, the X-rated industry is actually one of the leading developers of anti-piracy software. The reason why porn is always on the cutting edge of technology is easy to see. Most companies have a carefully calculated budget strategy laid out for their next decade of business. They simply cannot afford to deviate from that plan. So there's no room to just screw around and find new market positions. And that seems to be all pornography has done throughout human history.